appreciate what I did for you and I um, disappeared for a while so you can get a coffee break and the reason is I'm very excited about what I'm about to show you this is a, f a phenomenal week with regards to the topic of content the one I'm going to be talking about and I just wanted you to uh, be energized and have enough caffeine in your system to pay attention I'm going to be going through um, quite a bit and it's not going to be just by myself I'm glad to say it's going to be about comedy so it's the funny business of content I'm using this as you could say a case study I'm going to be trying to give you a real world example of what everybody's talking about everyone is giving you um, incredible information about how fast everything is progressing I am a traditional broadcast background person I've worked in TV I've filmed a lot but now everything is changing faster than we can keep up anybody who tells you they're an expert on everything is probably lying um, or uh, they work in a new media company but that's just my opinion um, there is a question that I would ask anybody who is creating content and asking for content and it's are you content with your content now of course it doesn't sound so funny and until I say it the way I heard it the first time which is in an Indian accent which is are you content with content and it was at a conference similar to this um, the thing is we have so many media players right now and everybody is vying for your attention people don't know which one of these brands they need to associate themselves with the fact is you have to associate yourself with all of them but in the right mix and uh, what we've been doing and what I've uh, been trying is to experiment with this and I'll give you some learnings some mistakes even that have been made along the way um, things are changing faster than you can even you or I keep up with um, Yahoo just bought Tumblr for 1.1 billion I'll give you the good news um, the owner of Tumblr didn't make 1.1 billion according to Marissa Mayer he only made 200 million peanuts so there's hope for the rest of us some brands exist here in the Middle East Facebook YouTube and Google have offices here in the Middle East of course so do Yahoo but some would say that they expand too quickly some would say that they're trying too many things at once for example this offer that Google has done in one of the Arab cities I think isn't exactly within its uh, remit but um, I can't vouch for the quality of the fruit and veg but you can get a banana for in 0.3 seconds I believe you can see it right there at the door another unfortunate thing is not just the big companies people individuals are making mistakes with these uh, big brands and these social media outlets for example the man who named his daughter Facebook because he was so proud of the role it played in the Egyptian Revolution not everybody thinks things through this guy obviously hasn't thought of his daughter's teenage years when you know you're gonna get guys saying I spent all night on Facebook um, <laughs> maybe it's gonna change maybe she'll be lucky I'll go through this presentation with the past the present and the future it's very simple um, I'm going to be telling you the story of stand-up comedy stand-up comedy is something that I am um, on stage talking I'm, I'm here because of and that is stand-up comedy is the origin of many many stars in the West and now in the Middle East it's because it's about telling stories a stand-up comedian sees the world in a different way observes it and mainly their writers and this is why I began trying to get stand-up comedy on um, our screens now inshallah I'll get through the whole thing quickly I say inshallah because there are many things that are happening again I'm going to ask um, Sandeep to prepare the first video and I'll have my friend Dean Ubaidallah tell you a joke that has actually come back to be real here in Dubai and his own version of inshallah
I had a show tonight, and they go, you have a show, inshallah. And I realized that the Arab world, you guys use inshallah more than Arab America. You guys use it for situations God would not even care. <laughs> for those who are Arab, inshallah means God willing. There might be some. I was in a restaurant in Jordan. I swear to God, I asked somebody, where's the bathroom? He goes, it is over there. I go, I'll be right back. He goes, inshallah. I'm like, what has happened to your bathroom? Come here, Habibi, let me help you before you go. We're just people. I'll get back to the relevance of that video um, in the talk. Um, so what we created, I was um, in a network, TV network exchange, it's named OSN now, it's Showtime. Uh, we created the Axis of Evil comedy tour. The reason we wanted to have this was we had a comedy channel and there was no stand-up comedy in the Arab world. These guys, they had uh, the best opportunity for comedy in, in time, really, because they had George Bush as president and um, they had endless material. Of course, um, it was a big success for us. Everywhere we went, we made sure that we engaged with a younger crowd. And the point about engaging with a younger crowd is we wanted to get talent. We wanted to get writers. We wanted to get performers to engage. And this worked. It worked in ways that we didn't expect. Um, I want you to see this next video to see. This is 2008. We did more shows with Sugar Sammy. Sandeep, if you play the video. this much for so long. I thought it was amazing. I've never been to a stand-up comedy show before and uh, it was just the best. Sugar Sammy, I don't know what to say. It's excellent. It was like amazing. I've been watching a lot of comedy movies and everything comedy, but this is like the funniest thing I've ever seen. Um, to us, it was uh, fascinating to see the reactions of these young kids. What you need to know is their school age. I mean, um, the 12-year-old, uh, of course, you know, we're Arabs. 12-year-old with the beard, amazing reaction. Um, okay, I'm lying, she's 14. The kind of reactions we got were, we see this and we think that we can do it. Thank you, he got it. Um, very hairy, my friend. Um, so we thought, amazing, we're doing the right thing. It's gonna be so easy for us to make money on this. The events were happening by themselves, people picked up on it. The guy in the middle is Bahraini, that's in Bahrain. You have the Emirates, you have Jordan. People were getting up and trying this for themselves. And for us, all we had to do is record it, TV company, video on demand, get a few telcos involved. Basically, they want it on their mobile. All this was very, for us, obvious. Um, we could sell merchandise off the back of it. We were behaving like a big broadcaster. We controlled the talent. We could dictate our own demands, effectively. What we didn't expect, and what has changed much quicker than anybody thought, was that the high that we were on, the high that we are going to tell people what to do, we thought everything we did was right, we were definitely wrong. Not hugely wrong, there was some success, but wrong in a big way. There was a new revolution. The new revolution that happened, and I'm not talking about the political revolution, you're all here because of this, it's the digital revolution. But what really happened for us, again, as content creators, I'm talking about the people who make the content. A lot of people here want to know how to control it, how to distribute it. But you have cameras that are very accessible and you can make it at home. How do you capture all of this? Comedy is a very relevant uh, genre, at least, to look into this. How do you capture all of this? What kind of distribution these young people have? Added to this, governments are putting everybody on um, tablets. In the Emirates, 14,000 iPads were given out this university year. 14,000 iPads given away for free to university students. Zayed University, New York Times article. Um, it's the largest deployment in the world, so Apple actually announced that it's the largest deployment. And within uh, four years, I think, they want to have schools and universities. Everybody's going to have one of these devices. So how do you get people to watch your content versus all the other content? I really uh, believe that uh, the gentleman 
um, talking about NBC, he's definitely right. There's still room for big broadcasters, but they're not the only player. They're lucky to enjoy the size, but what about the rest of us and what about the content? I'm going to ask Sandeep to play this video, but before he plays it, there are always frustrations. And I love this guy. He's at the top of his game, Louis C.K. He's frustrated with technology. I'd say not just us, but the youngsters that use the technology. Let's see how he says it. Sandeep. Yeah, because now we live in an, in an amazing, amazing world, and it's wasted on the, on the crappiest generation of just spoiled idiots <laughs> that don't care, because this is what people are like now. They got their phone, and they're like, ugh, it won't. Give it a second. <laughs> give, it's going to space. <laughs> Can you give it a second to get back from space? <laughs> is the speed of light true? Yeah. Well, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I was, on a, I was on an airplane and there was internet, high speed internet on the airplane. That's yes. the newest thing that I know exists. And I'm sitting on the plane and they go, open up your laptop, you can go on the internet. And it's fast and I'm watching YouTube clips. It's am I'm in an airplane. And then it breaks down. And they apologize, the internet's not working. The guy next to me goes, this is bull <laughs> <laughs> Like how quickly the world owes him something. Yes. He knew existed only 10 seconds ago. Right. Right. And on planes. I'm sure the people laughing are laughing because they know somebody like that. I'm sure none of you are that person. Um, but yes, I was on a flight recently and the internet was down, damn it. Um, so there's a real world, again, uh, to the comedy uh, scene, a real world aspect. People want to be with people, there are events happening everywhere. This is an event that happened in Saudi, a whole month of stand-up comedy. And a lot of you know about Saudi and what people are doing out there. What they're doing in addition to the events is actually broadcasting themselves. This is a very, very simple thing. We've done this since time immemorial. People tell stories around the campfire. We just have a new way for people to actually hear us. So the Saudi story is global. Um, everybody knows that they are, for, they, they are bypassing, especially in the comedy genre, the broadcasters. They are broadcasting their own. Um, and how people with brands, broadcasters, and of course, digital brands can capture this is the newest thing. Nobody has a perfect example. People are trying. The worry is that everybody's going to be glued to their, broad, uh, to their computer rather than listen to what the broadcasters say, but that needn't be a worry if you take risks. The thing is, the talent are taking the place of broadcasters, again, in the world of comedy, and they are the ones dictating where they want to actually have their voice taken. They can be heard. A lot of people are taking time to get with this. Again, I'm one of them, but they can be heard. They don't need you. They have a blog. They have uh, YouTube. They have a camera. I'll give this a second to sink in with the Arabs. This, um, for those of you who don't speak Arabic, um, is from Egypt's revolution. Egypt's revolution was an unexpected catalyst. This gave people a chance to say, this says, leave, shame on you, my hand hurts, from holding the sign. Um, so what happened in Egypt is a story way back, starts two years ago, 2011. This guy, Basim Youssef, He's a very good friend of the guy he wanted to be, John Stewart, all in a very short time of two years. He's got 2.7 million Facebook fans. He started online. He's got a broadcast partner. And the thing that he, so I've spoken to him, and the thing that he insists on is uh, he wants freedom. If the broadcaster is going to dictate what he says, he doesn't want to be on the broadcaster, and that's why his 9 million plus views on YouTube are all he needs. And recently he made headlines. Basim Youssef, because he was uh, accused of trying to overthrow the government, where he wasn't. He was just telling people his own humorous perspective on it. Now, to do with Facebook, this is a little um, short video. For those of you who um, are Arabic speakers, this is the kind of show we've been doing um, here in Dubai. For the first time, we're moving over to Arabic. So a lot of the stand-up comedy has been in English, and some people are becoming quite professional. 
Um, this guy, and if you get the video already of Muhammad Salim, Muhammad Salim, Egyptian as well, has his own take on Facebook. Can you play? Uh. تعرفين بقى يا جماعه ايه اللي غريب فعلا؟ الفيسبوك. فعلا لان في حاجات كتيره قوي ملهاش اي معنى. زي البوك. يعني لو حد عمل لك بوك تفهم ايه انت بقى؟ ان يا ولد يا ولد يا ولد يا ولد وتقريبا موضوع البوك ده لو سكناه للعربي هيبقى اللي هو كل الناس على الفيسبوك كل الناس انا مره دخلت لقيت عمتي عامله لي ايه ده 60 سنه ومحجبه وتخينه كده وقصيره واقفه جنب عمي عامله كده كاتبه تحت مي اند ماي بيبي وتاني صوره عامي لابس مايوه وعامله له تاج بيبي وتالت صوره هي واقفه عامله كده <تصفيق> وابويا عامل لها كومنت بصفائح الزبده النايحه كاتب لها اهلا وسهلا والله دخلت عندها على اللسه لقيت عمتي وخالتي وجوز عمتي وجوز خالتي وجدتي الله يرحمها عامل لها جروب اسمه تيتا لافرز لقيت عمي بعاتي جون يا حيوان وبعدين يا جماعه صعب جدا ان انت يبقى في حد من اهلك من الناس الكبيره عندك على الفيسبوك، الشباب ما تعملوش كده. ما تعملوش كده. لان هم بيتصرفوا تصرفات، يعني انا عمتي عملت لي اد، عملت لها اكسب. عمتي دخلت على الورك كتبت لي ايه في فاكر يا حماده لما كنت بتعمل على روحك وانت صغير؟ وانا اللي كنت بغير لك؟ بس بصراحه يا جماعه يعني انا مبسوط. انا مبسوط يا جماعه بصراحه ان هم بيسهلوا التصبيت، يعني انت تبعت مسج تعمل فوق عملوا تشاتنج بعد كده الموضوع هيبقى اسهل يطلع لك صوره كده يقول لك منى فيول تقول له ايه يقول لك داونلود ناو على طول بس اكيد هيدفعوا فلوس اوكي الا بقى لو حد فيكم يعرف حماده هاكر دي حاجه ثانيه and he makes a very important point there's an age difference people from the older generation are trying to get in touch with the younger generation they're trying to use the same kind of technology but the thing that's happening that's the biggest surprise and this is right now everyone is creating content when i say everyone's creating content usually content makers so you go to a production company you should get a writer somebody who knows what they're doing it doesn't happen all the time for me it's very exciting to see because at least they're experimenting the biggest kind of news for people like us is that comedy represents a huge part of what people see on YouTube. Argam.com is a Saudi Arabic website. Everything else is 60%. Comedy represents 40%, okay? Um, this is, as a genre, a very important one. And I'm not the, the only one saying this, and um, you'll see why. KitKat, a brand, they have a comedy competition happening, stand-up comedy. I'll be honest, I think, they're great for trying. I think they could have used help in conceptualizing it because um, they didn't use people who are trying stand-up comedy in the conceptualization stage, but very good for trying, and somebody's going to be crowned a winner and make some good money. Yahoo. Yahoo is, everybody knows, a huge company, but they went to the biggest name in Egypt, Ahmed Hilmi, a movie star, and asked him to make videos. And he's made a full series, and he... I think has started the second one. I think it's um, uh, started airing on Yahoo. When I say airing, of course, publishing on Yahoo. There's just Wi-Fi that you need. It's still air. Um, and the interesting thing for people who are making it is everybody's trying something new. He didn't even use Facebook much when he started this. But now the big name star who didn't need it is fascinated by it. And he's making things happen. But why is this week? And at the beginning, I said, this is more exciting than when Harvey Nichols moved to Dubai. It's really, really huge. It's because there's a little brand, standup.com, that I subtly um, stuck in there. And this is the case study. 
I wanted to have a hub for all this comedy content. I know, I know the people in the different countries, and I set up a website with a couple of people um, helping me out. It's just we put on events, and we want to put on um, content on YouTube. That was the idea. We want people to know whether they're Lebanon, Egypt, uh, Saudi, what's going on. But the YouTube channel took on a life of its own, and this is the whole point about adaptability. Start to focus on where you're getting attention. This week, 19th to the 25th, YouTube in the United States have Comedy Week. It's huge. The amount of comedy they have on YouTube is massive. These are all playlists from different providers. But why is this big news for anybody in the industry of content making, content creation, broadcasting, the traditional sense of NBC? They are doing what nobody has ever done on the online side. They're focusing on a specific genre and pushing it, they're promoting it. This usually happens on a TV network. It could be NBC, it could be Jazeera, it could be something to do with sport. But this is an online company. They're promoting citizen programming. And the brilliant thing is the guys here in the Middle East didn't want to take what the states were offering and they approached local partners. So right now, you go on YouTube's front page this week, you'll see them promoting comedy as a genre. And the guys at Kharabish, you can see they have over 40 million views in their cumulative um, channels. I've been working with Rajai. You can see up in the right-hand corner that little stand-up brand. I'm part of this. I mean, I'm blessed that I didn't expect it, and it's actually happening. Yesterday, the banner on YouTube, when you go on the front page, was my little brand, and it takes you to the YouTube um, page that I had set up. And this is literally within three or four days. It's gone up to 25,000 views. Today, I expect it to go up by another 5,000. We've been posting content every day. But here is a key. One, it's not just about the one. I have to keep all of these updated. So I'm working with a social media company on Facebook, Twitter, Google. And one thing that not a lot of people know about yet is what Google are doing to kind of control everything. They're acting, in a way, like a broadcaster. They're trying to get everybody to do what they want, but they're doing it A, subtly, and B, they're trying to listen. Of course, it's freaky, it's a bit Big Brother-like, it's like they are um, in control, but it's about Google+. They're doing it in a good way. Um, I have a Facebook page for this site that has a few hundred people. Because Google backed this Comedy Week, the uh, Google Plus page has over 40,000 fans now. And this is in a very short time, in the past two or three weeks. Another way Google have allowed different things to happen at the same time is uh, tomorrow we have a hangout with Maz Jobrani. There's going to be a live thing. Three or four of us are going to be talking to each other across different countries with not a single TV involved. Um, now to the important part, showing people the money. Um, this is the end of the talk. Everything I talked about now is actually happening right now. So it's the present. This is what I would say is part of the future. I'm not seeing where it's all going to go. But it's very important to realize broadcasters are going to be there. Content creators are going to be there. But I, if I would hedge my, hedge my bets, would move away from being a middleman. Because people are going to make what they want. And the middleman is the one who's going to be removed. People are going to go straight to the source. And they're going to get what they need. And a person, you saw him at the beginning, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. has just he screwed an age-old uh, system. Louis C.K. sold his video direct for five bucks on his website using PayPal. He filmed it, similar to the one you saw Mohammed Salem, very simple cameras, and he sold it to people. His anti-piracy campaign is written in the small print. It's just, don't be an asshole. You can afford five bucks. And he says it in one of his interviews. Was it successful? He made $1.1 million within a month. Profit, that's gross profit, after paying his 250,000 costs. He then went against another middleman type, and he sold all his tickets to all his tour online for $45. Every ticket. No VIP, no VVAB, none of that. You have to present your credit card at the door, and that's how you get in. Was it successful? In 45 hours, he made $4.5 million. What I'm saying is you can create content, you can broadcast it, these are very important, but the middleman's role, just controlling and trying to keep people away from something, isn't 
so successful. And as he says, he guess, guesses it was a good idea. So the video, live events is the content. How it interacts with these other things is still in a process. And it's about trying, taking risks, seeing what would work, not being old school. Um, I'm at the end of my presentation. Um, this is probably how kids see one of us talking about a 56K modem. That's a grandfather saying, in my day, all we, has, we had to wait for the internet. And the kids probably see us in multi-platform shapes. He's recording his grandpa using his eyes. And he says, grandpa is so boring, LOL. I'm going to leave you with a video of another guy that we brought here to Dubai. Um, he talks about the generation gap. He does it in a much funnier way than I do. I'm sure all of you or some of you will recognize this type of character. Um, this is Godfrey. Uh, I've been Jamil Abuarda. Thank you.